Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Madeline and in today's video I have a really fun knitting tutorial for you. So today I'm going to be showing you how to knit these slipper socks. So basically what these are, are they're top down socks. So we start up at the top of the cuff, we knit all the way down through the toe. So I'm going to break it down step by step for you. Down in the description box you can find each video breakpoint so that way you can fast forward or rewind to any specific part in the video. In the description box below, you're also going to find the link to my website where you can find the PDF version of the pattern. And there are multiple sizes available for this pattern. So all those will be down below. So just to go through real quick what I'll be showing you in this video. So when we knit these, this is the full thing when the cuff is folded up. So we start up here at the cuff and we're going to knit ribbing with buttonholes going through this top portion. So you can see I have two buttonholes up there. Then we're going to switch to just plain stockinette. We're going to knit through the rest of the leg. We're going to do a heel flap and a heel turn. We're going to knit through the foot portion of the stock. Then do the toe decreases and a Kitchener stitch bind off. Now I added a fun little detail to the bottom of my sock just to make it look more like the ones you buy in the store. So I added the little dots to the bottom of my sock. And I think they look really cute and just a little bit more professional. And then the last thing we do is we add the buttons to the side of the sock. So that way we can fold it over and button it in place. That makes it more of a slipper sock rather than just a sock. <laughs> so if you have any questions or comments, please type those down below and I'll be happy to get back to you. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. I put out new crafting videos all the time. So keep an eye out for those and you'll be more updated to them if you're a subscriber. So let's get started. The materials you need for this project include one tapestry needle, four buttons, and each one of the buttons I used measured about one inch in diameter, size US 8, 24 inches or longer circular knitting needle from Magic Loop, or if you prefer, you can use double pointed needles, you just want to use the same size again, a US 8, one stitch marker, and then there's an optional like kind of a little design on the bottom and for that I used the tulip puffy paint in the white color. For this project you want to use worsted weight yarn also known as medium weight or number four. I used the Yarn Bee Forever Plush yarn because that yarn really had that super soft texture just like the slipper socks you buy in stores. And I knit mine using the medium size and they fit around a US um, shoe size 9 to 10 and I ended up using 250 yards. So that was almost exactly one and a half balls of this yarn. So depending on what size sock you knit, and then also how long you make the foot, it could be larger, or you could need more or less yarn than that amount. So first we're gonna cast on. This slipper sock is knit from the top down to the bottom or the toe. So we're going to cast on however many stitches it says for the size you're knitting in the pattern down below, up here at the top, and we're going to join them in the round. Now anyone who's been around my channel for a while knows that I knit using Magic Loop, so that's how I'm going to join in the round. But if you knit using double pointed needles, just cast on those exact same number of stitches and divide among your double pointed needles. So in this video, I'm going to be knitting the medium size. So for me, I'm going to cast on a total of 36 stitches. And you do want to use a looser cast on method. So I would recommend something like the long tail cast on or the German twisted cast on. Those would both be great options. So now I've cast on those 36 stitches and I'm going to do magic loop to join in the round. So now I've set up for the magic loop I'm going to do and I'm all ready to begin my ribbing. Again, if you're using double pointed needles, just join in the round and place a stitch marker for the beginning of the round. And now what I want to do is I want to work knit two, purl two ribbing for an inch and a half. So all that means is I'm just going to knit two, purl two, repeat all the way across the round, and repeat that same round over and over again until my work from the cast on edge up until the bottom of the knitting needle measures an inch and a half. And then I'm going to come back and show you how to work this um, little button hole right here. So I'll come back and show you the next step. Also, if you're curious to learn Magic Loop, 
I do have quite a few videos on my channel where I show exactly how I divide my yarn and join in the round and everything like that. So if you're curious about Magic Loop, I'll link some of those down below. So now I've knit for that inch and a half and the next step can be a little tricky. So what we wanna do is we wanna create a buttonhole that's exactly on the side. So to create this buttonhole, we wanna cast off two stitches. I wanna cast off one stitch that's before basically where my beginning of the round is. And then the first stitch after the beginning of the round. So I wanna cast off the last stitch and the first stitch. So to do that, um, I've already worked this stitch over here. That's the last stitch. So because it's magic loop, it's a little tricky to just cast this one off when it's back there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slide that one off my back knitting needle, put it on my front knitting needle. Now I'm just gonna pull my back knitting needle through so I can work with it. And again, I'm just gonna slide that first stitch that I've already worked over onto my right knitting needle. Now the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna knit the first stitch. Now I'm gonna cast off the previous stitch. So I'm gonna take that one up over and off. Gonna knit the next stitch, cast off the previous stitch. So take that one up over and off. Okay, so now I've cast off those two stitches, one from my end of the round and one from the beginning of the round. So I'm gonna continue working this round following the ribbing that's right below it. So for instance, the next stitch, you can see I have a bump right there. So that stitch is gonna be a purl stitch. So I'm gonna do purl two, knit two, and continue working the ribbing all the way around. Now at the end of my round, I finish with a purl one. And then before I turn my work, so before I move on to where the beginning of the round marker would be if you're using double pointed needles, I'm gonna cast on two stitches. So the way I do this is I put my hand behind my working yarn, grab the strand with my bottom three fingers. Now I'm gonna take my finger towards myself, up over the yarn, and then back behind it and below. So now basically I have like one and a half wraps around my finger. And now I just wanna take my knitting needle point and go right under that top loop that's on my finger and just slide it right onto my knitting needle. So I cast on one stitch there. And these ones you wanna make sure you don't pull too tight at all because it will become hard to knit them if you pull them really tight. So to show that one more time, I put my hand behind my working yarn, grab it with my bottom three fingers, take my pointer finger towards myself, up over the strand, back behind and below, and then towards myself and up again. Now I'm gonna take my right knitting needle point, go underneath that stitch, and slide it right onto my knitting needle. So now I just leave those on there, and I make sure there's, they aren't too tight. Now I'm gonna turn my work, And again, I don't have the full ribbing to start off with here because I cast off that first stitch. Now it's over here actually. So what I wanna do is I'm just gonna start where the repeat would be here. So this stitch is a knit one because you can see all the way down below that stitch, I have knit stitches. So I'm gonna start off with a knit one, then purl two. And then I can get back to the knit two, purl two ribbing for the rest of this round. Now when I get to the end of this round, the first cast on stitch is gonna be the end of my repeat. So it's a purl two, I'm gonna purl that stitch. And then the second cast on stitch is actually for the beginning of the round. So this one, I'm gonna knit one. So now what I like to do once I have it all back at the beginning again, is I'm gonna take that second cast on stitch that I just knit, and I'm gonna move it from my back knitting needle to my front knitting needle. And then I've already worked it, so I'm just gonna move it over to the side. And now I'm gonna begin working that full repeat again. So I have knit two there at the beginning, bring my yarn to the front, purl two, and now I can work the full round 
just regular knit two, purl two ribbing. So what we've done here at the beginning is first we cast off two stitches. So we cast off the one stitch at the end of the round, and then we cast off the first stitch at the beginning of the round. Then we worked all the way around, back over to the side again where our beginning of the round is, and then we cast on two stitches. We cast on a new stitch for that end of the round, and then the second cast on stitch was our new stitch for the beginning of the round. So now if you wanted to replace your stitch marker, if you're using double pointed needles, you'd want to replace your beginning of the round stitch marker in between the two cast on stitches. And at this point, you should have exactly the same number of stitches on your knitting needles that you started with when you cast it on. So now for this whole ribbing portion, what we did is we started off with the cast on and then we worked two by two ribbing for an inch and a half. We just added that first buttonhole. Now we're gonna work the two by two ribbing or the knit two purl two ribbing for a full two inches. Then we're gonna repeat those exact same steps and add a second buttonhole. And then we're gonna just continue doing the knit two purl two ribbing for the final inch and a half. Then that'll be our full ribbing portion. And we'll be ready for the next portion of the sock. So I'm gonna continue working all the way through here and then I'll come back and show you the next step. So now I've finished the ribbing portion with my two buttonholes. And this next portion of the sock, all this portion is, is we wanna knit round after round until this portion of the sock measures five inches. The next step is to add the heel flap and turn. And for this step, you want to pay attention to whether you're knitting the right sock or the left sock. And the distinction is going to be which half of the stitches we put the heel flap and turn on. So if you're knitting the left sock, we're going to be adding the heel flap and turn onto these first half of the stitches. If you're knitting the right sock, then you want to knit across these first half of the stitches, turn your work, and then you're going to work the heel flap on the second half of the stitches. And the reason you have to pay attention here is because you want your buttons and the button holes to end up on the outside of your leg. So the two socks need to be different. So in the video, I'm going to be showing you the left one where we just work the heel flap on these front stitches. So to work the heel flap, we're going to work a number of rows that's equivalent to how many stitches you have for half the stitches. So for example here, I have 18 stitches, so I'm gonna work 18 heel flap rows. And the heel flap row is gonna be first, we're gonna slip our first stitch as if to purl, then we're gonna knit one stitch, slip one as if to purl, knit one stitch, continue all the way across, repeating those two steps, these first half of the stitches. So now I've just worked across half of the sock stitches and I just finished with that knit stitch. So now I don't want to thread this needle back in again because I'm not working in the round now. I'm working flat. So what I want to do is I want to turn my work. And now instead of what I would usually do when I'm working in the round and work these stitches over here on the other knitting needle, what I want to do is I want to work the exact same stitches I just worked across. I'm just going to work across on the inside of my sock basically and knit these stitches again or really purl them. So I'm gonna slip my first stitch on the half of the sock that I'm still working. Slip my first stitch purlwise, and then I'm gonna purl across the remainder of the stitches on this half of the sock. Now I'm gonna turn my work again. And now again, I just want to work across those same stitches. And you can already see the pattern starting a little bit. You can see my knit stitches and my slip stitches in there. So again, for those two rows, I only worked across this half of the stitches. I worked flat across these. I completely ignored the second set of stitches. So now again, I'm going to continue repeating those two rows over and over again for a total of 18 rows or nine repeats. Now I've completed all my heel flap rows, and the way you can double check is if you turn your work to the side and count the number of loops going up. So you should have the same number of loops as the number of repeats you were supposed to do. So for example, I was supposed to do nine repeats, 
so I should have a total of nine loops going up the side of my work. So next up, we need to turn the heel. So again, the directions are gonna vary depending on the size you're knitting. For my size, I'm gonna start off by knitting 11 stitches. Then I'm gonna work a slip slip knit. So I'm gonna slip the first stitch as if to knit, slip the second stitch as if to knit, pass them both back over to my left knitting needle, then knit them together through the back. And I'm gonna knit one. Now I'm gonna turn my work. And now that I'm on this side of my work, I'm gonna slip the first stitch purlwise. Then I'm gonna purl five stitches. Then I'm gonna work a purl two together. So instead of going through one stitch as if to purl, I'm just gonna go through two loops at the same time. Purl them. Then I purl one. And again, I'm gonna turn my work. And now I'm gonna repeat a similar row to that first one I started with. This time I'm gonna slip the first stitch purlwise. Now I'm gonna knit six. Then I'm gonna work a slip slip knit. So I'm gonna slip the first stitch as if to knit, slip the second stitch as if to knit, then knit them together through the back loop. Then I'm gonna knit one. Now again, I'm gonna turn my work and I'm gonna work a similar purl row to that first one I started. And in the pattern, it writes out each one of these steps depending on your size. So now I'm gonna work through the remainder of the heel turn steps, and then I'll come back and show you the next step. So now I've finished the heel turn, and I'm ready to be in the next step, which is where we pick up the heel flap stitches. So what I wanna do is I wanna take my work, and I'm gonna turn it basically 90 degrees. And now I'm gonna take my left knitting needle point, and I wanna go down the side of this heel flap, and I wanna pick up those edge two loops on each one of those stitches. So it's a little hard to see again on this yarn, but let me zoom in. So for example, the first one I'd wanna pick up here would be these top two loops. Then I'm just gonna knit right into both of them. Then I wanna go down and I wanna find my next set of two loops, pick those up, knit right into there, and I'm gonna continue going all the way along this edge, picking up sets of loops and knitting into them. Once I finish picking up all the loops along the side, I'm gonna pick up the final stitch down here at the bottom, which is actually just gonna be the bar that's in between the back of my work or where the heel flap is and where the front of the work is. So I just look for the bar at the top of my knitting. I'm gonna pick that up and then knit that through the back loop. Now I'm gonna turn my work. And at this point, I am gonna be knitting in the round again. So here, I'm just gonna knit all the way across these front stitches. Now before I turn my work again, I'm gonna pick up with my left knitting needle point, the bottom bar in between the front of my work and the back of my work, and I'm gonna knit into the back of that loop. And now I wanna go up the opposite side of this heel flap, so the one that I haven't picked up yet, and I'm gonna again pick up each set of those loops and knit into each set. Okay, so now I've picked up all the stitches that I need to. So again, I'm gonna turn my work now, so I'm ready to keep on knitting in the round. And now the initial round after you pick up those heel flap stitches, it might have a slight modification depending on the size you're knitting right at the beginning of the round. So for example, 
the size I'm knitting. I need to knit one, then work and knit two together. And that knit two together is just placed there because basically when I was doing that heel flap turn, I decrease one extra time on the left hand side versus what I did on the right hand side. So that's why that's there. Now I'm gonna continue working until three stitches remain before the end of this side. So before three stitches remain basically up the side of this heel flap. Now I'm gonna work and knit two together then knit the final stitch and I'm going to turn my work. On this side of the sock, I'm going to count out and knit each one of the original number of stitches that I started with. So for the size I'm knitting, that's 18 stitches that I'm going to knit across. And now what I wanna do is I wanna place a stitch marker. And this will just help me keep track of where my decreases should go. And now here I'm gonna knit one. Then I'm gonna work a slip slip knit. Then I'm gonna continue knitting across the rest of this side. Turn my work. So what we just worked there, where we knit across until three stitches remain on the first side of the heel flap, then we worked to knit two together, knit one, we turned our work, we knit all the way across the top side of the sock, knit one, worked a slip slip knit, and then knit the remaining stitches. That's our decrease round. And then after each decrease round, we want to knit one full round. And now we want to continue alternating between the full decrease round and knitting one round over and over again until the total number of stitches on our knitting needle is back to our original count. So essentially mine started off with 36 stitches. So I'm going to continue alternating between those two rounds until my total is back to 36 stitches. Then what I like to do is I'm going to take these other heel flap stitches that are left over remaining once I get back down to 36 and I'm just gonna slide them back over to my other knitting needle. So then basically again, I'll have 18 stitches on one knitting needle, 18 stitches on the second knitting needle. And all I do after that is I'm just gonna continue knitting round after round all the way through the foot portion of the sock. Now, how long you want the foot portion of your sock to be depends on basically what your shoe size is. So I'll put a link down below that'll tell you a good measurement to use for the length of the sock. And then you wanna leave two inches for these toe decreases. So you just wanna continue knitting round after round until basically you're two inches short of what your sock length should be. Another way you can do it is if these socks are for you, you can try them on and then basically stop knitting when you're two inches from the end. So again, just to summarize, I'm gonna continue alternating between the decrease round and the knit round until I get back to my original number of stitches. Then I'm just gonna reorganize my stitches to make it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna slide these stitches over here. So then I end up with 18 stitches and 18 stitches. And then I'm just gonna continue knitting the foot portion of the stock until two inches remain for my desired length. The last step here is gonna be to do the toe decreases. So, Again, I have half my stitches on one knitting needle, the second half on the second knitting needle. And the way these toe decreases are gonna work is we're gonna work one full decrease round, and then after that decrease round, we're gonna knit one full round. So the decrease round looks like this. We're gonna knit the first stitch. Then we're gonna work a slip slip knit. So a slip slip knit is where you slip the first stitch as if to knit. Slip the next stitch as if to knit. Now you want to post them, pass them both back over to your left knitting needle. So essentially we just twisted each one of those two stitches. Now I'm going to take my right knitting needle into the back of both those stitches. 
and then knit them together. Now I'm gonna knit until three stitches remain on this front knitting needle. Now I'm gonna work a knit two together. So I'm gonna take my right knitting needle point into the next two stitches, going from the left to the right. Then I'm gonna knit them together. And now I'm gonna knit the final stitch. I'm gonna turn my work. And now I'm gonna repeat that exact same thing on the second half of the stitches. So I'm gonna work a knit one. Now I'm gonna work a slip slip knit. So I'm gonna slip the first stitch as if to knit, slip the next stitch as if to knit, pass them both back over to my left hand needle. Now I wanna knit them both together. So I'm going through both of the stitches through the back, wrap my yarn around and pull through. Now again, knit until three stitches remain. Now I'm gonna work a knit two together. So again, right needling, needle point. Gonna go from the left to the right through those next two stitches. Pull my yarn through, knit the last stitch. So that is one full decrease round. And during that decrease round, we decreased one, two, three, four stitches. And now I'm gonna knit one full round. And each different size has a different number of stitches you wanna end up with but I'll come back and show you the next stitch or next step <laughs> once I end up with the final number of stitches that I need for this size. The final step is to do Kitchener stitch at the top of the toe. So when you're doing this, you just wanna make sure you have the same number of stitches on the front and back knitting needles. And how this Kitchener stitch works is there's a two step setup and then a four stitch repeat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through all the steps one time, and then I'm just gonna put the steps up on the screen. That way you don't have to hear me narrate them over and over again. Um, so I recommend just pausing that screen once you get to it. So that way, if you need to reread them, you can look at them there. So what I have here is I have about an 18 inch tail and it's threaded through my tapestry needle. And first I'm gonna do the two setup stitches. So first I wanna take my tapestry needle through the first stitch on the front knitting needle as if to purl. And I'm gonna leave that stitch on the knitting needle. Now I'm gonna go underneath that front knitting needle to the back knitting needle. And I'm gonna go through that first stitch on the back knitting needle as if to knit. And the reason you wanna go underneath that front knitting needle is so that you don't end up with like an extra wrap over that front one. Okay, so now we've done the two setup stitches and it's time for the repeat. So the repeat is we're gonna take our tapestry needle through the first stitch on the front knitting needle as if to knit, pull the thread or yarn all the way through. Now we wanna slide that first stitch on the front knitting needle off the knitting needle. Now I wanna go through the new first stitch on the front knitting needle as if to purl. and I'm gonna leave that one on the knitting needle. Now I wanna go through the first stitch on my back knitting needle as if to purl. And I'm gonna take that one and slide it off the back knitting needle. Now I'm gonna go into the new first stitch on the back knitting needle as if to knit. And then I'm gonna leave that one on the knitting needle. So that's the four stitch repeat. So now I'm gonna put that up on the screen and I'm gonna continue doing that all the way across these stitches. Now all I'm gonna do here at the end is I'm just gonna thread this tail to the inside and then just weave in my end. The next step is gonna to be to sew on the buttons. So for this step, I use two buttons. And these ones I just got at Joann's. They're just like a matte button. These ones are one and a quarter inches. 
And I also have a sewing needle and some thread that matches both my socks and the buttons. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna try and match these two to be the same length cuff. So what I wanna do is I wanna have basically like the right side of my sock facing out and I wanna fold the sock in half so you kinda of get the profile view rather than the top view. So this is the top view. We want the side view of the sock. Now I'm gonna fold the cuff down. Okay, so that's the length that would perfectly match this one. So that's what I'm gonna go with. And you can see, it's a little hard to see with this yarn, but it is basically exactly at that place where the ribbing joined the plain stockinette. That's where my fold happens. So this part can be a little tricky, but basically what you wanna do is you wanna place the button down so that the button holes are peeking through where that hole is. And then you just wanna hold it in place. Now I'm gonna fold this up and out of the way a little bit. And now I wanna attach my thread to my sock in that exact location. So I'm just gonna look at it there. I'm gonna tie my thread on to the sock. And now I'm gonna sew the button in place right in that same spot. And you do wanna make sure that you're only sewing through one layer of the sock and not both layers. Now, once I've gone back and forth a couple of times, I'm just gonna tie off this thread. Now that that button's in place, I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the second button up here at the top. So now this last step here is completely optional. I think it just adds a fun little texture to the bottom. So what I have here is I have the Tulip Puffy Paint, and this one is just in the white color. I have a little scrap piece of my same fabric that I have for the sock. I have one piece of parchment paper that's about the same size as the foot of my sock, and that's all I'm gonna need. So the first thing I recommend you doing is knitting one of these little sample pieces, and then trying out the fabric paint to see if you like the way it works on the fabric. Try stretching the fabric, making sure the way you made your design stretches with it, and also just see if you like the consistency of it. Um, like see if it actually adds anything to the bottom of your slippers. So what I found works for me is that actually the bigger dots work better than these little tiny thin dots that I put here. If I get these close to the camera, you can see these dots kind of sunk into the fabric. Whereas the ones I actually put on the bottom of my slipper are much more 3D. So I found these 3D ones actually um, work out a little bit better than the smaller dots where they just sink in. Try to swirl here, that did not work out well. And then over here you can see I tried a different brand of fabric paint, but this one kind of just dried hard and doesn't really have any texture. So again, I would recommend you just knit a little sample piece, try out some different shapes, different designs, let it dry all the way, and then just see if you like it. See if it's for you. Because a lot of what this is just adding is it's just making it look more like one of the store-bought ones. Um, it doesn't necessarily add much more functionality beyond that. So the way I'm gonna do mine is I'm just gonna take my little piece of parchment paper, slide it into the slipper, and then I'm just gonna fold it so that the base of the foot is up. And now because I already put a design on the bottom of this one, I'm gonna put the exact same design on the bottom of this one. And you can see kind of when you squeeze it out, you can do like, first I tried flat dots, which are more like that. And then I tried the more 3D ones, which you have to build up a little bit more. So that's what I was talking about there. 
And now I'm just gonna add on whatever design I feel like. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them down below. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.